Well, we just wrapped up week 13 of the 2023 NFL season. And well, we're back in December and chaotic times. Yes, that is right, ladies and gentlemen. Week 13 and well, in terms of the playoff picture, at least it's getting pretty messy, pretty chaotic. But hey, that's December football as the playoff picture. And it's not even uh, the second week yet. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild um, how the playoff picture is shaping up already. And, well, I said it was going to be a ready week slate, but it ended up being uh, a pretty solid one um, when the games uh, finished all said and done. But, yeah, that being said, let's talk about the week that was week 13 of the 2023 NFL season. So we had a couple teams on by this week, um, the second to last bunch, uh, before we go full gear um, the rest of the way. So those teams included the Baltimore Ravens, the Buffalo Bills, uh, the Chicago Bears, the Las Vegas Raiders, the Minnesota Vikings, and the New York Giants. So those teams will be coming back uh, this coming week in week 14. So speaking of week 13, uh, we kick things off with Thursday Night Football only on Amazon Prime Video as Dak Prescott threw his third touchdown of the night to his tight end Jake Ferguson on that Thursday night. And that was a big one as they gave themselves the late lead um, as they took over and managed to stop the Seahawks on their final two drives and hold them off 41 to 35. Going to the Sunday slate of games, starting with the early morning portion in a very, very ugly game um, in New England that saw the Chargers sack the lights out on Bailey Zappi and the Patriots five times as they pitched an ugly duckling shutout six to nothing. That was a very unwatchable game. Even if you look at the highlights, very unwatchable highlights. I don't recommend it. Down in the Big Easy, which is continuing to become the Big Hard, the Lions jumped out to a 21 to nothing first quarter lead, but then slowly but surely saw it disappear thanks to Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara, and they had to score more. The Lions had to score some more twice to eventually hold them off 33-28. to And then in New York, the gang green side of New York, the battle of the mid quarterbacks continued for the New York Jets as Desmond Ritter's touchdown to tight end McCole Pruitt was enough to pull out an ugly one, 13-8. A weather delay, a nearly two-hour-long weather delay, couldn't delay the inevitable, unfortunately, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, as an old teammate of that goes by the name of James Conner rushed for two touchdowns on them. But even worse for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they lost quarterback Kenny Pickett to a multi-week ankle injury, as Arizona beats up on the Pittsburgh Steelers 24-10 and dealing them a blow to um, their playoff spot. Down in Tennessee, trick plays and special teams gaffes were the theme of the day as a wild game went to overtime and Gardner Minshew connected with Michael Pittman Jr. to seal the deal in a big win for the Colts over the Titans 31-28 in overtime. Then the nation's capital, Tua Tuck of Viola, delivered two long bomb touchdowns uh, to Tyreek Hill in the first half as the Dolphins pretty much broke it open um, before then to end the game early versus the broken Washington Commanders, 45-15. And then in the big game of the early morning portion, Russell Wilson and the Broncos crawled back from a 16-3 deficit in the first half. However, Wilson's three back-breaking interceptions in the second half, especially the one at the very end, would prove to be their downfall as C.J. Stroud and the Texans held on to gain an important playoff uh, tie-breaking win, 25-17 over Denver. Now going to the afternoon slate of games, Mike Evans had a big receiving day as he clinched his 10th 1,000-yard season as the Bucs held off the Panthers, who were the first team eliminated, no surprise, from playoff contention, 21-18. A back-and-forth affair down in Los Angeles saw... The Rams eventually pull away late as a costly mistake uh, on special teams on a missed extra point from, guess who, the skid marks of all teams, began a a spree of mistakes for them that the Rams pounced on, took advantage of, as they got the win over the Cleveland Browns 36-19. And then in the big afternoon game of Week 13, the big touted NFC Championship rematch my San Francisco 49ers shook off a very bad first quarter that saw them go negative six yards and they dominated. They absolutely pounded the pudding the rest of the way 
on Jalen Hurts and the Eagles as Brock Purdy and the offense scored on every chance they got and humbled those Eagles 42-19. to And then in a pretty good Sunday night football game and for week number 13, Jordan Love had his biggest breakout game yet, throwing for three touchdowns and continuing drives for the Packers, who received the good luck charm of not just Simone Biles, but WWE's own Liv Morgan, and delivered a major upset victory over Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, 27-19. to Take that, Taylor Swift. And then in the Monday Night Football game of week number 13, Bengals backup Jake Browning uh, surprised the world himself too with the slicing and dicing of the all-elite Jacksonville Jaguars, taking them to the extra period as kicker Evan McPherson sealed the stunner upset 34-31 to in overtime. So that was for your results. That was a recap for week number 13 in this 2023 NFL season. How did your team do? How did your team not do? Let me know in the comments below. And I'd like to hear how your team did or didn't do um, this past week. So as the playoff picture continues to uh, heat up, begins to heat up, let's talk about my winners and losers of week number 13. Starting with my two winners of this week, um, it's mainly on the N- a- NFC side, my San Francisco 49ers. So, you know, 11 months ago, they lost their quarterback in Brock Purdy on the very first series in an all-important NFC Championship game. And they are basically rendered useless, helpless, nothing to do in that game. And all that time, we had to hear bullcrap uh, from Philadelphia media, worldwide media, on us making excuses. Now, here we are, 11 months later, the Niners got their lick back. I know it's just a regular season uh, victory, and you know I'll admit that too. It was, it was just an, a regular season victory. But at the same time, they put themselves in a position to potentially reclaim the NFC's top seed if the Eagles slip up just once, or hopefully even twice more later. But whether or not uh, the 49ers reclaim the NFC's top seed and home field advantage throughout, that game on, on Sunday in Philadelphia proved that if the 49ers need to go back there um, in an NFC Championship rematch, or they need to go somewhere else, or they, they get to host the NFC title game, they prove that they can win the playoff in the playoffs anywhere. And the, depending on where they need to go and, and where they need to play, they showed that they can win with how they played and how focused they were. That was a big win for them on Sunday. And then the Green Bay Packers, you know, with all the stars in attendance on their side, Simone Biles, Liv Morgan, they got that good luck charm. Jordan Love and the Packers saved their best show for the bright lights of Sunday night at home versus the defending Super Bowl champions, who, sure, they had their own uh, bright shining star in Taylor Swift, but none could compare to Simone Biles and Liv Morgan. No, because Jordan Love looked the most composed. Jordan Love looked really good in this game. Made some big throws to keep his team into scoring position and made the most out of his opportunities and kept the ball away from Patrick Mahomes. Speaking of Patrick Mahomes, he made a lot of mistakes in that game. And, you know, coupled with his poor receiving cast, he made a big interception late and he was pressured all night. And that was thanks to the Packers defense. So, Credit where credit is due for the Green Bay Packers in that major game to get that major upset. And, you know, with the way that they're playing and they possess the easiest schedule remaining, hey, lo and behold, they can surely make a push now for the NFC's sixth or seventh seed. So they're doing a fine job um, making a push for one of those uh, last two NFC playoff spots. Now in terms of the losers for this week, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, ugh. Like, how do you lose to the 2-10 Arizona Cardinals, man? Like, really? But then again, I shouldn't be really that, that surprised because um, their performance on offense is pretty much the Steelers that most were accustomed to all season, including myself. However, um, what the Steelers should really be worried about, though, is, you know, Kenny Pickett. He's gone under the knife with an ankle injury that's going to keep him out for multiple weeks. We don't know how severe it's going to be, but... If he's out for much longer than initially expected, like two to four weeks, but if he's out for the rest of the season, then yeah, 
pretty much that's going to be a death blow um, to whatever grip they have left on that fifth seed in the playoffs. Because if they they have to keep trying out Mitch Trubisky, the original MVP, the Nickelodeon valuable player, um, things could get ugly, especially after they face the New England Patriots, those broken ass Patriots on a Thursday night only on Prime Video if you want to spend that $15 a month, pal. But even then, the schedule tightens up for Pittsburgh. And if Pickett is not back at some point by then, then that grip on the fifth seed is going to slip very fast. And then the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, their defense, that has been very suspect against serious competition, had their weaknesses show up on full display against an offense missing its starting quarterback in Joe Burrow. A rushing attack that struggled um, was allowed to get run over by Joe Mixon. And then a secondary um, allowed a very uh, a large amount of chunk throws from Jake Browning to a various amount of receivers. But that wasn't even the worst part of why they lost this game. The worst news of all was the injury to Trevor Lawrence late in the fourth quarter where he had his own lineman, Walker Little, fall on his ankle hard. And judging by his reaction, um, it did not look good. That injury did not look good. So hopefully, I mean, it's not too bad because the initial tests uh, prior to Jaguars on like different social media sites are, have been noting it's an ankle sprain, like a, a like major, uh, like I don't know if it's a major ankle sprain or a high ankle sprain, but nonetheless, they're saying just ankle sprain for now, being a little general. But we'll find out um, after after this recording. But nonetheless, if it's more than that, it's going to be a big blow to the Jaguars and what it, the their remaining playoff chances. But I mean, it, it's probably going to be a blow to their the chances to their, the number one seed. But more importantly. They got to hope that Trevor Lawrence is not not seriously injured. But, oof, tough night. Tough night for the Jaguars uh, this week. So, my one big takeaway um, from week number 13 is actually centered around this playoff picture. So, this is going to be our first playoff watch um, for our weekly recaps. As we get deeper into December, we're going to keep checking on, on, on the playoff picture because, you know, it's going to be chaotic. This is going to be a lot of craziness as we get get along in into December. You know, all these clinching scenarios. Um, who's going to get in? Who's going to get out? It's going to be interesting as the weeks intensify. So this was a, a good first week in terms of the of a shift in the playoff picture. You know, you had the Niners whooping on the the Eagles as their grip on the NFC's top seed loosened. So it's pretty much a in arms race, if the Eagles start to, uh, if the Eagles starting to slip up here and there, so if they lose one more game or or two, then it's up for the taking. And meanwhile, on the AFC side of things, I mean that number one seed is still wide open because every team is like close to one another. But the Chiefs and the Jaguars losing this week, you know, it helps the Dolphins a bit because they won this week. They're what nine and three now compared to the Chiefs and Jaguars eight and four. So, still a long ways to go, but still, it helps the Dolphins in some sense. The Packers, meanwhile, they have entered the wildcard conversation, and they have tiebreakers over um, the Rams, and I believe the Seahawks as well, and among others down below. And then for the Colts, they have also entered the picture in the other AFC uh, wildcard race. So, hey, there's still a lot of things to figure out. I mean, this is only beginning, the beginning, but these next few weeks... Are only going to get crazier when it comes to figuring out who gets in, who gets out, um, who gets that top seed, um, and who gets to be facing who. This is going to be fun. This is going to be interesting to watch and all the craziness that is going to unfold. Um, there's going to be a lot of domino effects to figure out. So it's just madness. It is pure madness. We're in the chaotic times. Of the NFL season. And should be interesting. Should be interesting to watch. But anyway, that is it for my recap for week number 13 of the 2023 NFL season. Let me know your thoughts on how your team did, how your team did it, or your game of the week, what have you. Anything that you wanted to talk about uh, in this past week of the NFL in the comments below. Anyway, that is it for me, Dylan Lasagna of Very Cold Lasagna. 
And as always, keep that lasagna very cold in the fridge with your takes on the world of sports. And until the next one, peace out.